Ooh, I got a good one for you today. Before we get started, I would appreciate it if you'd like the video, comment down below, and subscribe if you're new. Thanks. What's up everyone? Luke is here with Race Prep Multirotor, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to build the perfect FPV stack. Let's go! So here we have all of our components we're going to be using to build our perfect FPV stack. The electronics are going to be personal preference, obviously, but we have our flight controller, ESC, we have our VTX, whether it's HD0 or analog. We have our receiver, a nifty little TPU tray here, which I'll explain later. We have our stack screws, our aluminum lock nuts, nylon stack nuts. These are very important. And we have our stack gummies. These are very important as well. And I'll explain why. I've had many people ask me before, why does my quad fly like crap? That is one big pile of Or, why did I just burn my motors? What? And, why is there jello in my video? What the f Nine times out of ten, it's because there's an issue with how the stack was built. Let's go fix that. So first I want to show something that I see quite a lot. Please don't do this. Don't do that. You can see there's a bunch of wasted space in the stack and it's causing basically the top plate to rest up against the VTX or whatever is in the top of the stack. Uh, I see I see stacks like this that are pressed against the top plate, not using stack nuts to secure uh, everything and it it's just not going to be good in a crash. You don't want to do this. So first we'll install our stack screws with our lock nuts this is very important this is our foundation the stack needs to be secured with lock nuts so in this case we have four aluminum lock nuts installed we have 25 millimeter tall stack screws and you want to get stack screws that match your standoff height the reason for this is when they're installed in the carbon plate they'll be a little bit lower than the overall standoff height you can see here we have couple of millimeters of space between the top of our screws and the top plate and this is what you want you don't want the screws touching the top plate so then we'll install our ESC onto our stack and this is where those gummies come into play these are lower than traditional gummies it allows us to get the perfect stack height we don't have too much space between the bottom of the ESC and the mid plate here. And there's just enough space to be above the press nuts. Most frames nowadays have press nuts in this location. So we have enough space to clear the press nuts and we're not using too much space. Next, we'll put our nylon stack nuts on and these are gonna serve as a layer between each component. So these are about two to two and a half millimeters tall, and they're gonna provide us just enough room between each component. First, we'll put them all on hand tight, and then we will go in with a wrench and tighten them down. So we don't want to over tighten these. We don't want to smash the gummies down. We still want a little bit of vibration resistance with those. And again, we have just the perfect amount of space between the bottom of the ESC and the frame. Next, we'll put our flight controller on. The flight controller has the same exact gummies that the ESC does. The gummies are not too tall. So once we slide that on there, we'll see that we have just enough space between the flight controller and the ESC. 
This particular flight controller has the USB on the bottom, so it's really crucial to have enough space between it and the top of the ESC. So once we have the flight controller on there, we'll do another layer of the nylon stack nuts. And again, we'll get these hand tight first. Once we get them hand tight, we can go in with the wrench and snug them down. Very important that you don't tighten them too much. You don't want to smash the gummies. Once again, you just want it about hand tight with the wrench. So once this is done, we'll take note of the stack height once again. And this is just to ensure we have the same space between all the components. We've got enough space between the ESC and the flight controller and the bottom of the ESC and the frame. Now it's time for the VTX, the last layer. So whether it's HD0 or analog, both of these are gonna go on the same way. On the HD0 VTX, I do replace the gummies once again. I don't use the stock gummies that come with the VTX. I use the shorter ones, as you can see here. So again, we don't have too much space between the VTX and the flight controller. We have just enough to put our top layer of nylon stack nuts on. And this here is the nifty TPU tray I mentioned earlier. This is for analog stuff. It's for the TBS receiver and VTX. It basically just holds them in place so you don't have to sticky tape them anywhere. It's really, really convenient. And I'll leave a link down below if you're interested in getting something like this. You can 3D print this yourself if you have a printer. If you don't, you can head over to that link down below. You can see once we have the top plate on, we have basically space between every component. And this is called, I like to call it crash space. So when you crash, you can break your top plate, bend your standoffs and so forth. And all this space between the components is gonna be really nice for crashes. So to recap, we have our 25 millimeter stack screws installed. We have our aluminum lock nuts installed first. And we have our ESC. We have our nylon M3 stack nuts, we have our flight controller, we have another row of nylon M3 stack nuts, and on the top we have our VTX secured by one more row of nylon M3 stack nuts. And that's pretty much it. That's it for this one. Hopefully now you can build your perfect FPV stack. My name's Lucas with Race Prep Multirotor. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.